Hey everyone, welcome to a new YouTube video. I'm going to be posting a video as a review of the Stock Bubbler tool. It's been about 50 days that I've been using this tool. So very close to two months now, and I kind of wanted to post my review of this tool. And because I'm kind of experiencing it for the first time with my virtual assistants and me using it, you know, it's been a, you know, 50 days, I don't want to say it's a long time because certainly it's not that long, um, but I do kind of want to share my experience with it, uh, where I wish things can go left and right, and uh, kind of share with you guys my opinions overall. So let's go ahead and get started, and I'm going to first show you guys how the tool works. So here are various examples in my demo Adobe Stock account. And by the way, I just kind of want to go ahead and share some information. When I say demo Adobe stock account, this is the same account that I've showed in my Adobe stock and AI stock photography business guides that I've shown in the members area. If you want to get access to some of the free or paid lessons of the members area, you can either click the link in the description or search poddegree.com and it will take you to the members area. We have currently 310 members in our members area and we have a bunch of lessons whether it be on Redbubble, T Public, stock photography. This is a free lesson here that you guys can watch. And by the way, any lesson that doesn't have a uh, paid price next to it means that it's completely free. So something like this, you can click on it and you can get it for free and start watching it now. But anyways, this is the same account that I have in my um, other lessons that are paid where I talk about AI stock photography businesses. And once again, I wanted to share my opinion of the tool and how I use it. And more importantly, where I wish things could be better and how I see my future using this tool. So first thing is, is that the way this business works is that you're uploading photos and you're uploading them to different stock photography sites. In this case, we're using Adobe Stock as the example. And on Adobe Stock, you upload various images, you add tags to them, as you can see here, you add your title, and then you click Submit. And once you click Submit, those images will be in review. And once they're in review, you go back to your dashboard and they will have some sales for you over time. With that being said, I kind of wanted to show you guys how first I use the tool once again before I kind of give my opinion on the tool. So the thing that I'm going to show you is let's go ahead and scroll down here to an image of these fitness models. We can use this image here. And this has a male and a female fitness model. And of course, I'm going to make sure that this is clicked where it's using an AI generated image. And then here, I'm going to click on this, that the people are fictional because they are created by AI. And then what I'm going to do is I'll give it a title. So for example, personal trainers in amazing shape, standing in a gym, for example, okay? Then we have here the ability to add 49 total tags. And I could add some of these here, but not all of them would apply. For example, the word handsome doesn't really apply, although that might be the case. People who are searching the word handsome not necessarily might be looking for these keywords. So I, I always say all the time you can pick and choose out of the keyword suggestions the keywords that will apply the best. But then again, when you're uploading 100, 200, 1,000, or even 10,000 images at once, it can get kind of hard to sit here and click each one manually and figure out for each and every individual image what keyword is the best. So what's the solution? The solution is using the Stock Bubbler tool. So in my case, I can write here uh, personal trainer, right? Because this image could definitely be used for someone who's trying to purchase a personal training image. Okay. And it's really more corporations that buy these images over people. 
But anyways, we'll hit search here and we get a bunch of keywords. We get fitness, exercise, health, wellness, training, workout, nutrition, strength, cardio, motivation. Interesting. I'll go ahead and copy these 10 keywords and I'll paste them here. Now, a little tip that I kind of like to mention is that one of the things that I advised in the lessons, even in the paid lessons, is when you create an image, you want to have other images that are similar to it so you can add keywords to, you know, multiple at once. So here we have three different examples of images that are kind of similar. We have this one, we have this one, and we have this one. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to select all the way up to here. I'm not going to select this one. This one has something wrong with the image. I'm not going to say what it is, but graphically there's something wrong with it. Um, so I'm just selecting all three and I can copy and paste these 10 keywords. And effectively, if you think about it, since it's 10 keywords, it's 10 times three because it's applied to three keywords. That's 30 keywords added. Now, here's the thing. What the tool is designed to do is it's designed to weigh in algorithms across all different stock photography sites. And it's supposed to provide the best keywords associated with the stock photography sites based on previous data. So I could have easily just done a Google search of what keywords I can add and things like that. But the thing that makes this tool different is that not only does it use the ability of AI, but it also uploads or not uploads, but it utilizes previous data that has been trained by this company. So I don't know if you guys know this, but when you use AI, you can train AI with data. In fact, GPT or OpenAI had created this functionality a number of months ago. And GPT is not even that old, right? Maybe like a year old, maybe less. But they have the ability to train your AI. So you can effectively make your own AI and you can train it by giving it data. And so based on the keywords that I'm searching, and I think they've trained it with over 10 million data points, based on the keywords that I'm giving it and the current algorithms that stand across all stock photography sites that you see in this page here, it gives me a list of keywords that are best for that certain circumstance depending on the keyword that I give it or that I provide it. So really what I'm doing here is I'm fighting two wars or two battles at once. The first thing is keyword accuracy and the second thing is basically speed and time. It's not just spitting out keywords that are relevant but it's also spitting out keywords that are related from an algorithmic perspective. That's very important to understand. So let's go ahead and take a look a little bit more and let's add to this. So let's say in some of these photos, we see a six pack, right? Or abs, we can do that. We can type in six pack as an idea, right? And see what potentially could come up. So we have abdominal muscles, that's great. Fitness, muscular, uh, muscular physique, core, strength. These are good keywords, and frankly, they're keywords that I wouldn't have thought of. This is why I say it fights two battles, not just one. One battle is the speed and efficiency, but also another is that algorithmic keyword relevance, which is very important. In terms of the speed and relevancy, this helps me probably the most from a virtual assistant standpoint. I want to emphasize, and I've said this before, that my virtual assistants do have not spoken English as their very first language. They've learned it as their second language. And so there can be a lot of mistakes that can come up. And in a business like this, the number one most important part is really good ability to speak the English language. For my virtual assistants, Sometimes there are some things that are a little off from their understanding of the English language and the tool makes up for that significantly. So here we have 29 keywords 
29 keywords is more, by the way, than about 40% of all the different listings that are presented in stock photography. Majority of uploads do not have over 29 keywords. Very important to understand that. And the more keywords that you have and the various combinations that a user types in into an algorithm to find more information, the better it is for you because the more keywords you have, the higher chance you have of showing up. The higher chance you have of showing up allows you to make more money with time. So let me go ahead and just copy and paste here from here to here, excuse me, from here to here, these three, and just copy these 29. Now, I could, or not 29, excuse me, but these 30 keywords here, I can essentially walk away if I really wanted to, or excuse me, 30 are remaining, I can choose to walk away, I can add more, but I wanna add very specific keywords. So let's just say I type in things that other people would be searching for, once again, that they would be searching for. I want things that are be related so I can show up. So here I see healthy fitness type bodies. I see a gym scenario. What if I type in the word gym and I also put in a comma and I type in healthy body. Let's go ahead and see what kind of results in these circumstances will arise. For the word gym, we see fitness, workout, exercise, training, weights, cardio, health, wellness, bodybuilding, and strength. And then here we see fitness, nutrition, exercise, wellness, balance, diet, active lifestyle, self-care, physical health, mental health. I think I like the better solution, the bottom solution better. I'll hit copy and I'll just paste it to the list. Now, something that I will say is some people might potentially ask me and say, what about keywords that have been overlapping? So for example, the word workout might have been mentioned more than once. So like workout comma, and then 10 keywords later, it will say workout again. The uploading keyword system will go ahead and remove the duplicate keywords after you save your work, okay? That's why if you notice here, we added a bunch of keywords, but it's only went up to 24 simply because the uh, key some keywords were already mentioned. So what some people like to do, and I've spoken to some people off camera, off the scenes who also use this tool, is they will achieve about two to three runs with the tool. They'll get their keywords, paste them, and then they'll just hit add all here. That's not necessarily a strategy that I recommend. Once again, using everything that we've taught you in the lessons, guys, when you're creating multiple images in the same niche, and they're somewhat similar, they might be have different scenarios, but they're somewhat similar, you want to try to include keywords that are a mixture between your short and your long tail. So a keyword like physical health in the world of stock photography is actually pretty long tail, believe it or not. And it's very rare where people will go beyond that. It's very, very rare. So keep that in mind when you're uploading stock photography. But anyways, since I wanted to do and keep this video on a review, you saw all it took here to produce over 70 plus keywords for these three images, if we add them all together, only took literally a few seconds to do. If you take out all of the talking that I did, all of the information that I'm giving, and you just literally watch what I did, clicking the buttons to produce these keywords, the results came very, very quickly. And Something that I want to emphasize is that speed is important when you're uploading a large amount of image-based content. And if you're going to be tagging them, the worst thing you could do for yourself is slow down because that's going to be the fastest way that you're going to give up. The longer it takes, the more discouraged you're going to get, and the slower you're going to get. And you could take this from somebody who's kind of experienced in this kind of world where I can un totally understand why people tend to give up quicker uh, than others in this kind of tagging adult, uh, stock photography type business. It's not really different for print on demand. I just want to go ahead and state that. So people who do print on demand that might not necessarily have experience with this might have a similar idea. I also recommend that you try to take keywords that might seem a little odd or you might not think of them immediately and apply them. So you just saw me apply keywords like champion, teamwork, dedication, perf uh, physical performance, competition. These keywords might 
potentially be related. Once again, you have to think from a corporate standing, so a corporate environment. In corporations who sign up for stock photography, and this is a whole different video on its own, but corporations that that you utilize and purchase stock photography, they're searching for keywords that they're not really nitpicking on. A lot of the times they have clients that need to approve certain images and they'll find things that are completely you know, related but not in the same niche. They'll find these keywords, they'll download the images and they'll send them to their account executives and their partnership accounts. My point is, is that if you're just somewhat related, add the keywords. You're going to get filtered in their search for the keywords you could potentially show up. And the whole point is you want to get those downloads because that relates to sales. And you could see here, this account was my demo account. For people that want to know how large it is, you can easily just go to my lessons, see how large the actual account is, and we've already generated sales on account with a very, very small number of uploads. In a very short period of time, might I add, those lessons have been added less than 40 days ago. So something that I want to say here is for a demo account, utilizing a tool like this is really easy to produce good income. Also, the, per the competition just doesn't add up. So in terms of the competition, and this is the last thing I'll say, is the competition doesn't usually add as many keywords as us because we're utilizing these automation tools. Now you have to, like I said, put yourself in other people's shoes. Majority of people do not use this automation tool. In fact, I would beg to say over 99.9% .9 of the people uploading to Adobe Stock don't know this actually exists. They're doing everything manually or they're just selecting the keyword suggestions here, which not always are perfect. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, but they're not always perfect. And you could see here at a time, let's see how many keywords are actually added. You know, you're talking about 20 something keywords at a time maybe, maybe 30 keywords in this section here. It's really not many. And so what happens is, is when you're dealing with competition like that, it's very easy to lap the competition, to beat the competition. And you'll be surprised on different images that are sold. For me personally, they're images that I personally would never purchase. But once again, these are corporations with accounts that they're allowed to upload 10,000, 15,000, 4,000, 2,000 images a month from Adobe Stock. They really don't care about you know, each image, they're not looking everything on a micro scale, they're looking on a macro. So they'll download 500 images at once, 200 images at once, send them to their account executive, send them to the client, send them to the content team, and then they utilize those images. So your concern is not, will somebody use this? Your concern is, how many can I get out as soon as possible? How many images can I bang out? How many images can I push to make as much money as I can because it's only a matter of time till it gets seen until it gets downloaded. And that's my point of view for the stock photography business, particularly across all sites that you choose to upload to. All right. So overall, my review for this tool is that it creates an unfair advantage for everybody else who's competing against me simply because they won't be able to produce nearly as much as I can in a short period of time. If you were to put me on a computer and my competitor on a computer and give us each a thousand images and I have my 10 hours to add tags and he has his 10 hours, I'll be done within the first hour. My competitor will take three, four, five, six, seven, ten 10 days to finish the work. So in terms of also accuracy, I'll do a better job. I'll have almost little to z probably zero mistakes. Actually, I'm not going to say probably. It's guaranteed that zero spelling mistakes will show up. I'll have zero mistakes from a relevancy standpoint, and my competitor will have mistakes. So in terms of is this tool worth it, the answer is absolutely. Not only does it help me lap the competition from a speed standpoint, but also from an efficacy standpoint, not efficiency, 
well, even efficiency, but efficacy. How useful is it? Does it actually work? Does it help me make more money over time? The answer is, without a shadow of a doubt, it absolutely does. I'm literally, once again, lapping the competition from not only a relevancy standpoint, but from an algorithmic standpoint, and from a slot standpoint, I'm fulfilling as many slots of tags of keywords that I could possibly add, and on top of that, I'm working faster than the competition. Something that I would say is, after you guys do this for a couple months, two, three, four, five months, and upload well past 10,000 images, and you get all those tags up there, you'll find that the easiest part of this job is just uploading the tags. That's the easiest part. The hardest part is probably creating the images. And that's not even hard, to be 100% honest with you. It's really not. Um, so really the truth behind this business, this stock photography business, is it's crazy easy. And I think people neglect it because they think that there's small profit margins. But it really just depends on your output and your work. I would hate to be someone without a tool like this doing everything manually. I would really hate that. And uh, hey, that's our competition right now. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm here to steamroll through the competition, make more money than the competition, and uh, just enjoy the fruits of my labor. So, Or let me rephrase that. Enjoy the fruits of the AI labor. And that's really what this is. I'm letting the AI do the work for me and I get paid off the back of the AI. And hey, I'm taking advantage of it while it lasts because who knows, once the robots take over, all this is going to be gone anyway. So that's all I got to say for now. I'll talk to you guys later and hopefully in the future I'll share with you my kind of large frame five-year plan with stock photography. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out, bye.